Welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video will mark our very first update video on the Tetramorium since I last introduced them in the exotic video. If you want to check that out and see them before this video, go ahead and click here. So what's the plan? Well, not only are we giving them both new nests since there's two colonies, we'll also be giving them brand new outworlds as it's becoming harder and harder to feed them because of their rapid growth. Speaking of their rapid growth, both colonies are almost surpassing 30 workers already, which is mind-blowing. This species really does grow really fast. And with that said, let's begin. First off, let's grab our materials. I'm going to be using a container, the new nest, and a bit of tubing, along with the colony itself. So here's the new nest we're moving it into. It's a used nest passed down from a friend. Unfortunately, it's missing two screws, but that shouldn't be a big problem. One thing that will be really good about this nest is it is about the perfect size for this colony. This way it makes them feel just right. Not too much space, but not enough they can't move around. Before we can move them in, we need to make sure... Before we can move them, we need to make sure we have an outworld for them. So let's do that. We cut our holes using a pair of scissors by twisting. Make sure to be careful and not... Aww. Awesome. Well, <sighs> take two. Be careful not to break plastic when twisting. Some plastics will break much easier than others, so go slow and make sure you don't make the same mistake I did. <laughs> now make sure your container is cleaned out. Normally this is something you do first, but I kind of forgot about it, so I did it now. One other thing I didn't do was remove the tubing. I don't know why I didn't do this beforehand, but there ended up being water particles stuck inside the tube, so here's a cool trick to get that out. Simply take a piece of cotton and a long toothpick and push it throughout the tube. If you were using longer tube, you definitely would have noticed it, but I was using short tube and I just kind of went for it. So make sure your tubing isn't too long. Of course, this usually wouldn't happen. So simply take it and start pushing it through. Do this for the second tube as well, and you're done. Now that your brand new outworld has both tubes installed in it, we can flip it on its side and begin putting a barrier on. So for this barrier, I used baby powder and rubbing alcohol. The consistency is roughly 1 4th rubbing alcohol and 3 4 baby powder. It doesn't allow the baby powder to harden on the side and become dusty, thus the ants will slip off. To apply this properly, use a circular motion. Give each side about 2-3 to three minutes to completely dry before going on to the next side. Make sure you get those nasty corners, as that's where ants have their best grip. Once all sides are dry, you're ready to move your ants in. If you want to do any extra decorating, go ahead. I'm choosing to leave this bare, because I just want to observe them with nothing on the ground at all, and not have to worry about soil, especially at this time of the year where there's snow on the ground. If you are also using an ants Australian nest, here's a fun fact for you. If you happen to run out of the tubes that are cut at C's on the ends, you can actually make them pretty easily with a pair of scissors. I'm actually going to make my own to demonstrate how well this works, and then plug them into my nest. All we have left to do now is hook up the nests to the outworld, and then hook up the old colony to that. And then, we let them do their thing. So, let's do it! You can see right off the bat, the ants were extremely eager to check out the new space. So eager, in fact, that in the confusion, some of them started rushing their own children out into the middle of nowhere, but then quickly retreated after realizing their idiotic mistake, although it was quite funny to watch. Soon after, the ants started flooding through the tube to realize they had a new nesting space available. After shining some light on their previous nest, they were really eager to get out of there. So eager, in fact, that the queen took it to her own advantage and just decided to leave which the workers were really confused about and were frantically trying to keep her safe. It was quite weird. After about 30 minutes of watching her just struggle underneath the tube, going back and forth in front of it but never going inside it, a few workers finally ganged up together and decided to just pull her through as she was not cooperating. Once she made it in though, she was not reluctant to go back as she headed straight in right away. Now that I knew that the queen was safe, I decided to try an interesting test. 
I dropped some food between the two tubes to see what the ants would do, either keep moving or decide to stop and feed for a little bit. And as it turned out, only a few were interested in eating, and usually there's swarms on them. Instead, they just decided on moving, which in my books is definitely the better idea. Now that our first colony was well on their way and definitely moved in, it was time that we take a look at our second colony and check up on them. And unfortunately, they haven't moved at all. After a full 24 hours, this colony still hadn't moved. But I wasn't ready to give up. So I decided to try this, adding a bit of water to their nest as well as providing some heat. So I went and got the heating cable that's currently heating a few of my colonies that don't need to hibernate and put that at the back side of the nest so hopefully they might discover it and think that that's better rather than exploring the space and not thinking anything of it. Also take a look at this. She has an egg stuck to her side. <laughs> that's a little weird. They'll probably take that off her right away. I just think it's funny she's walking around with a child attached to her and she doesn't even realize it. Poor queen. Soon after the light was placed directly above them, some of the workers started moving brood into a darker location just a little ways down the tube. This prompted them to grab the queen and move her down there as quickly as she could, even though she did not want to go down there at all. But of course, like usual queen behavior, she thought it was much better back underneath the light, so she decided to go back on her own. Workers were not very happy with this and tried to get her to move back, but she continued to resist. In fact, the move was going so well, they decided to bring a whole mealworm along with them. Imagine dragging a full bowl of chips around all the time, big enough you could swim in it. Might as well, right? After some time goes by, they finally decide to move in. I didn't catch footage of them actually moving as I was busy editing this, but while I was doing that, they managed to move. And look at her, she's sitting on quite a big brood pile. I'm pretty sure these guys will continue to lay throughout winter, but we'll see what happens. And that concludes our first update on the Tetramorium. Now, you guys might have a few questions about what's been going on recently, due to different community posts and Instagram updates that have left quite a few of you very confused. Well, basically what I'm doing here is I am setting myself a goal, and that is that I don't want to weekly upload anymore. I'm not saying that I won't weekly upload, I'm saying this, I rather would have a video perfect to how I like it rather than putting myself at a schedule that it's hard for me to keep up with. There's stuff that happens in my life that sometimes makes it really hard to get an upload up on time. So I think it's better this way as I can upload on my own pace and make videos better to watch rather than just pushing one out a week and them not being that well edited, filmed, or produced. This doesn't mean that I'll be switching to monthly uploads or something like that, it just means that they might be a little bit slower paced, like every one and a half weeks or two. A new logo for this channel might be in the works, but I think I'm going to be doing a poll once I have it made to see which one you guys like better. I also want to thank everyone who has subscribed to the channel as we have just surpassed 1.6k, so thank you if you did subscribe. If you're still confused on why I went through all that time to make all those profile pic changes and write up all that obnoxious code, well, the plan was is to be like a full channel reboot. Everything's brand new, the way I upload, the way I make my thumbnails, and most importantly, how I manage my time. I still want to give you guys as many uploads as I can, but I do want to make sure that they're well done enough. So from this point on, my channel will take more of a professional turn, well, the best of my abilities anyway. I'm super excited for this winter and next summer as I have a whole bunch of new things to show you guys. Now as I know many of you are wondering, how come this video isn't a full colony feature? Well I decided to save that until 2000 and instead just focus on what I'm doing now. This way I don't have to feel pressured into making something that big in such a short amount of time. The reason I didn't start out with one is because I wanted to start more simple and then work my way into it just so I get the feel of everything, before I try and show you everything in one video using my new style. If you made it this far in the video, I thank you so much for sticking around, and if you hadn't already hit the like button, do so. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will definitely see you in the next one. See you then.